Welcome to the 186th Gettysburg College Baccalaureate Service. The Baccalaureate Service is an occasion to mark time in a unique way, a sacred way. It is a way to remember the fullness of God in our presence and the action of God in and through our lives. While we would much rather be face to face for this service, we will take the next best step and be together virtually. The service is organized around the theme of peace in the unknown. It isn't easy to be with the feeling of not knowing. And this year has been full of it, to the point where we aren't sure what comes next. And yet, because of our faith in our community, we have made it to this point here today, stronger, smarter, and ready to move on to be a part of the world in the fullest way possible. In these last few weeks leading up to the end of your time at Gettysburg College, we pray you found some peace in the unknown of what life will bring you. Hear wisdom from the class of 2021 and how they navigated this academic year, the sacred texts that sustained them, and enjoy music from the Gettysburg College choirs. A heartfelt thanks to all our participants, musicians, readers, and speakers, and our video production team. We are thankful for their support in difficult circumstances and moments of celebration. God of all goodness and life, we give you thanks for this opportunity to reflect on the beauty and adversity that this year has brought for the class of 2021 here at Gettysburg College. We are grateful for the stories shared and thankful for the wisdom given to us in sacred reading and song. May this virtual gathering be a blessing to all who watch. Give them eyes to see all the beauty that has come to be in the midst of tried and troubling times and give them peace in the unknown of what lies ahead. Fill us all with grace, joy, and the peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen. Thank you, Elizabeth and Mary. Members of the class of 2021, family, friends, and colleagues, welcome. It has special meaning for us to gather together, even in this virtual setting, for an important and time-honored tradition here at Gettysburg College our annual baccalaureate ceremony. As I was reflecting upon this defining milestone in your life, in the context of a year unlike any of us has seen in our lifetime, I was reminded of a powerful scene at President Biden's inauguration earlier this year. Seated among the former presidents and their partners, Senate and House leaders, and world-class performers was a young woman, not much older than you, who was called to the microphone. She had devoted her life to this moment all of her studies, all of her drafts and redrafts, years of practice honing her craft. Poised and determined, she looked out upon the west lawn of the U.S. Capitol and a sea of cameras streaming to millions of people around the country, indeed the world, and she delivered a message of hope. One that encourages us amid our many shortcomings as a people and as a nation to never stop reaching to realize our promise, to be, as she says, the light in this never-ending shade. I'm speaking of America's first youth poet laureate, Amanda Gorman, and her moving five-minute poem, The Hill We Climb. If you haven't yet seen Miss Gorman's evocative performance, I'd encourage you to watch the video. If you have seen it, watch it again, but this time, direct your attention to a subtle moment right before her recital. As she collects herself, she breathes in and breathes out, readying herself for what was to come. It may seem like the most pedestrian of acts, but it was one that in many respects symbolizes the transition you are now making. Miss Gorman's breath before her delivery reflects what we call a liminal state. It's the threshold between the person Miss Gorman was before she stepped up to that microphone and the person she would ultimately become after she transfixed the nation with her poem, ensured her talents and her voice with the world. You can think of liminality as the space between leaping from one side of a riverbank to landing on the other side. As you prepare to enter graduate school or your first post-collegiate job, I'm sure many of you are feeling the sense of suspension and transition, caught between two worlds, the present, which is so deeply imbued with four years of memories and friendships, and the future, with its promise, challenge, excitement, uncertainty, and yes, sense of unknown. Over the last four years, you've gathered a great running start through your hard work in and out of the classroom and the grit you've refined during this pandemic. In many respects, you're now mid-jump, heading toward that other riverbank. 
I know that at times you may feel uncertain about whether you will land safely and gracefully on the other side. You may feel a twinge, maybe more, of self-doubt, of not being ready, of somehow not being quite good enough. Of this, I am confident, you will land securely on the other side. Breathe in, breathe out, ready yourself for the world that awaits because you have everything it takes to find a life and career of meaning, passion, and contribution. You've proven it in the classroom, on the stages, in jobs, and in the thousands of informal interactions that have marked your time in college. We believe in you, in the consequential education you have earned here, and that all you will do in the years ahead. Like Amanda Gorman, it's now your turn to rise to the microphone, speak true to yourself, and speak boldly. Share your talents and raise your voice in a message of hope and determination. In short, you have everything it takes to help create the world you want it to be. Class of 2021, we're so excited for what the future holds for you, and we look forward to celebrating with you in person at your commencement ceremony. On behalf of all of us here at Gettysburg College, a hearty congratulations. Boom, boom. I am sitting here wanting memories to teach me to see the beauty in the world through my own eyes. I 
healing memories to teach me to see the beauty in the world through my own eyes. Yes, I am sitting here wanting memories to teach me to see the beauty in the world through my own eyes. Hi everyone, I'm really happy to be speaking with all of you today. To be completely honest, I was really nervous for the weekend of commencement to come around. Normally, I am not great at dealing with change, and this weekend symbolizes so much change for us. After commencement, we will officially be graduates of Gettysburg College. It feels like just yesterday that we are all arriving to move in and meet our first year roommates. In the last year, we have all been forced to adapt to new changes. Many of us have been faced with the harsh reality that we cannot plan for every little thing in our lives, and that is especially tough when we now feel like we have to plan for the rest of our lives, which, by the way, we don't. Throughout the past four years, we have all experienced a variety of ups and downs. And throughout it all, for many of us, faith has been our anchor. It has grounded us in the present moment and reminded us that we have everything that we need to persevere already within us. If you don't mind, I would love for all of us to take a moment to pause together. Take a moment to stop where you are, take a deep inhale through your nose, and exhale out your mouth. If you are able, take one hand to your heart and the other to your stomach. Here we all are, grounding ourselves in the present moment. I hope you all know that our ability to pause, breathe, and ground ourselves in faith is available to us whenever we need it as we go through this change. Throughout the rest of the weekend, or the rest of our lives, know that we can relieve the weight of change off of our own shoulders and release our worries to God. And with this specific change, the change of graduating from Gettysburg College, it may feel like we are being faced with a lot of uncertainty. But I hope that you take so much from this year of immense change with you after graduating. I hope you take with you the resilience that you have shown throughout our senior year. I hope you take with you the patience that we have learned to have for ourselves and for others. I hope you take with you the knowledge that change never has to be entirely upon your shoulders. Change can be difficult, but it can also be beautiful, transformative, and inspiring. And that is what I see in all of you today. I see the beautiful, I see how you have transformed as individuals, and you all inspire me every single day because of that. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. So I leave these final words with you, to the class of 2021 especially. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, let us chase it. Let us allow it to fuel us throughout the rest of our journeys after our time here at Gettysburg. Let us ground ourselves in faith in every single moment ahead. Let us find the beauty and change and allow it to transform us. Thank you for inspiring me, and I cannot wait to see how you inspire others in your future. A reading from Psalm 139. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night, 
Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. I try to count them, they are more than the sand. I come to the end, I am still with you. When the pandemic hit, I felt the community aspect started to fade. No one was able to meet anyone without the fear of becoming sick with COVID. The closest people in our lives, our family, feared being together, and even mass was not held in person on Sundays. With everything being online, it became harder to concentrate academically. Club meetings were not as engaging, and worship online did not have the same effect as attending one in person. I felt like the human connection within my communities were lost. Community is an important aspect of who I am, is, is an important aspect of the human experience. Over these past four years, I have garnered relationships within the community of Gettysburg as a whole. Through taking multiple classes, I found individuals that not only wanted me to grow, they allowed me to appreciate what I was learning while establishing personal connections through multiple late night study sessions or attending office hours. Working within the Get Grab community this past year has taught me how to navigate using various outdoor equipment and to work efficiently on a team, all while deepening my appreciation for the outdoors. This community has allowed me to make personal connections participating in some kind of sport. Lots of camaraderie were created as my friends and I made a ragdoll team for floor hockey freshman year. Although we didn't get the satisfaction of winning, we got the satisfaction of being with each other growing stronger in our friendships. Indoor soccer was another community that I enjoyed being involved in since it welcomed anyone from any background of soccer to enjoy having fun on a team. The game of basketball firmly holds roots to the fan I am today. I was surprised to have written a paper about the ritual of basketball handshakes through encouragement of my religious studies professor during my time here. Being able to discover a community of people who enjoy basketball as much as I do, establishing connections, and coordinating pickup games with individuals at the Fieldhouse will always have special importance in my heart. I have loved my time here and the chance to be in an inviting community, a community that allowed me to explore myself as an individual ethically and spiritually. As a Vietnamese American, it has allowed me to meet people with similar experiences as well as people who are generally interested in the culture. Being involved in enjoying cultural events such as Lunar New Year and Bird Burst gave me the chance to appreciate both aspects of my culture and the diversity on campus. Finding pockets of community in DCF and Newman led me to explore my Christian faith. The process of becoming an honorary member of the Catholic Church during, my, during college deepened my love for Christ through my college years. I feel very fortunate to have established a connection with those who share a similar love for Christ. In the face of adversity, We've learned how to enjoy our last year together while keeping our community safe. The pandemic has taught us the importance of keeping connected to those in our communities and how we can adapt to situations more readily. This tough time will soon go away and we are more resilient because of it. Looking toward our futures, I hope we continue to grow our communities, explore new communities, and stay in touch with the Gettysburg community we leave behind as we turn to the next page of our lives. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إحدنا السراط المستقيم سراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المكدوب عليهم ولا الدالين 
Amin. Peace of mind is not the absence of conflict from life, but the ability to cope with it. We all have a vision for our lives, but sometimes, unexpectedly, things may not always go according to plan. What is important, however, is that we live each day to our fullest. It is hard to find peace in the unknown and to be at peace when our circumstances are not. And responding with fear to these circumstances is often common. But fear can also be a sign of growth. In order for us to grow, we have to move beyond a familiar sense of who we are and into unknown territory. Fear can often stop us from doing great things, like not traveling to new places or meeting new people. But in doing so, we miss out on amazing life-changing experiences. If we become comfortable with change, only then can we realize that it is not something to fear anymore. We can then embrace it and also find joy in it. And although change might mean leaving our comfort zone, but at the same time, it also brings the opportunity of something new and amazing, a new chance to reinvent yourself, to explore and learn and meet new people. A reading from John. As a father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. God's grace and peace be with you. I want you to take a second and breathe. Take it all in. We are here in what has been a hard journey, a journey filled with long hours at the library, papers and projects, Zoom classes and study groups, a journey filled with tears, anxiety and loneliness. A journey with changes and hurts that family and friends may never fully understand. But then there were also good moments too, moments of joy and love. And so I want you to take a breath and feel it all. Recall the good and the bad, because all of that is a part of you. All of it has brought you to this moment. I chose today's gospel reading from John because the author is writing to a community in crisis to a community who is trying to figure out their place in the world, in a world that is multicultural, multi-ethnic, multi-religious, a world so very different and constantly changing. And the thing is, we too have been in crisis, having to reshape, relearn, rethink who we are and who we want to be in this world. And it reminds me of the ancient Japanese art of kintsugi, translated as golden joinery. It is the art of taking broken pottery, and instead of using a clear adhesive to fix it, a golden powder is used upon the glue covering, the cracks in this shimmering outline. So instead of hiding the break, it's emphasized, and it's one of a kind. This unique method celebrates the fractures and breaks of the piece, making it even more beautiful than it was before. You, graduates, are like this piece of pottery with cracks and breaks, with imperfections and mess-ups. But the thing is, that is not the end-all, be-all of who you are. You are so much more than broken pieces. You are the beautifully golden joined pieces that God puts back together and makes something beautiful out of it. You are special and unique, and your story of brokenness is an important part of your learning and development and contribution to the world. But also, within our text we get Jesus' metaphor for the spiritual life, one of the vine and bearing fruit. And the thing about bearing fruit is anyone can do it, but it's even harder to bear good fruit. It's hard work. The soil needs to be tended, the vines pruned, the water and sunlight plentiful, years and years of attention to hopefully see some fruit on the vines. 
and we are called to bear good fruit, tend to what feeds our hearts, our souls, and our minds, to not just bear fruit for ourselves, but bear good fruit for others, and to be active participants in this world. Loving one another means we are entangled together, that we are meant to live lives of profound interdependence, growing into, around, and out of each other. And if we are meant to take Jesus' word seriously, then what we do and who we are in the world affects other people that we don't even know. This is meant to be comforting, that you have people wherever you go who will love you, care for you, and support you, that you will have many chances to break and be put back together, that there will be seasons where it may be harder to bear fruit and others where it is in abundance, and that wherever you go, God is with you. So go in peace, dear graduates, and love others the way God loves you. Amen. Philippians 1, 3 through 6 says this, I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you, because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. Graduates, this is not the spring you hoped it would be when you enrolled at Gettysburg College. You have been denied the celebration you deserve by circumstances beyond your control. The faculty and staff here at Gettysburg College agreed with you because we wanted to celebrate with you in all its fullness. But we also give thanks for you because you have borne these days of disappointment and change with dignity, purpose, and grace. I believe God has been with you in these days, and I believe what you have learned by bearing up through this year will make your future endeavors all the richer in faith, hope, and love. The class of 2021 will never be forgotten at Gettysburg College, but in time, your accomplishments will overshadow the pandemic, which has stolen a proper celebration from you. As you leave our community, we wish to bid you farewell. Blessed is the path on which you travel. Blessed is the body that carries you upon it. Blessed is your heart that has heard the call. Blessed is your mind that discerns the way. Blessed is the gift that you will receive by going. Truly blessed is the gift that you may become on the journey. May you go forth in peace. Amen. Thank you, Gettysburg College Class of 2021. God's blessings and our fervent prayers go with you.